Good afternoon. Um, happy to uh, be here and thank you for your attention. We'll uh, talk a little bit about some of the things that have happened recently with uh, Terumo BCT integration and some work we're doing with some of our clients. Um, and uh, so we'll get started. So Terumo is really a, a global leader in blood component and therapeutic apheresis and also now uh, leading the way in cellular therapeutics in a number of ways and we'll touch on some of those things. Um, the company really uh, believes in the potential for blood, and we've done a lot since the mid-1960s, uh, all based out of Colorado. So we started in 1964 uh, as Kolb Laboratories, again, based just outside of uh, Denver uh, in Lakewood. Our current president and CEO, David Perez, has been in uh, place for about 14 years now. And we have approximately 5,000 associates worldwide uh, in virtually every continent. Uh, we've got regional headquarters in Brussels, Buenos Aires, Hong Kong, and Tokyo, and we'll talk a little bit about uh, some of those areas. Uh, and we've got manufacturing facilities and other local um, facilities in about 39 other locations globally. Um, for manufacturing, in the Denver area, we uh, manufacture all of our medical devices on the Trumo BCT side, as well as a number of the disposables. So we have what we can be described as a razor, razor blade uh, uh, type of operation where we place or sell uh, me medical devices and then make lots of plastic disposables for those uh, uses in our three primary areas within Trumo BCT. Um, in Belgium, we have an electronics uh, component that uh, has come on board. Uh, Japan, we make a lot of blood bags. Uh, in Northern Ireland, we also have a CMO uh, facility for uh, some things there. Uh, and then in Vietnam, we just recently opened a facility there. Uh, it's still uh, in the process of being validated, and we hope to have FDA approval uh, once that process gets underway. So we should have that open by sometime next week, uh, next year. I wish it were next week. Um, we are um, currently uh, owned, our parent corporation is Terumo um, Corporation out of uh, Tokyo. Uh, so we were known until three years ago as Caridian, so we've had a lot of iterations and growth in our company, first known as Cobe Laboratories, then Gambro uh, BCT, then Caridian BCT, and most recently, Terumo BCT. So the Terumo BCT headquarters will remain in Denver, and uh, the BCT standing for Blood Component Technology. Uh, Terumo Corporation has had a long history uh, of sales, particularly in Asia and in Europe. Uh, Terumo, or at that time, Caridian BCT, had a lot of um, access to North and South America as well as Europe, and so it was a very natural fit with very little crossover, actually, when the two uh, companies formed uh, and merged. So that happened, uh, again, uh, approximately three years ago. Um, Terumo BCT is about a, a $1 billion, approaching a $1 billion in sales uh, for the various components, and Terumo Corporation is about a $5 billion uh, corporation, just so uh, for relative size. Yeah, here's what you see is our, our product portfolio. And um, uh, back uh, in the 80s and 90s, we acquired uh, technologies from IBM and other uh, platforms from COBE from previously that have ex uh, expanded over the years. Um, about 70% of the revenues for Terumo BCT are derived from the blood center or for the blood center segment of the organization and still uh, continues to grow a bit. Uh, that's a very challenging area, as you know, as companies or, or uh, organizations and hospitals try to reduce the amount of blood being used. So most of the growth actually is happening in the developing areas uh, in the U.S. and uh, other places in Europe is relatively flat to declining uh, in terms of blood utilization in those areas. So uh, we uh, continue to look at other op opportunities to grow the business there. The therapeutic apheresis side of the business represents about 20% of the uh, Truma BCT revenue, uh, still uh, fairly good growth of uh, 15 to 20% uh, year over year, and we expect, expect that to continue for the uh, foreseeable future. I should also note that some of the devices that we see here um, were acquired from a Truma uh, Corporation, including some of the, uh, the T-seals and welders. Uh, we've got uh, a, a couple of interesting devices, including the Mirasol uh, pathogen, 
pathogen reduction uh, technology on the lower right, essentially using riboflavin um, and then illuminating that with UV light to kill various pathogens. Uh, needless to say, with uh, a lot of the issues going on globally right now, there's been uh, even more interest in the opportunity to use that. It's currently approved in Europe. Uh, it is not approved yet in the U.S., but we're working with regulators to uh, go through that process. Um, and then uh, the, on the therapeutics side, we do have the, the COBE spectra, which has been around for many years. It is being sunset uh, in various parts of the world as the op, uh, Spectra Optia uh, platform is now being launched. Uh, so that is going to continue to grow there. And then uh, the, the area that I'm responsible for globally is the cell processing side, which represents uh, the smallest in terms of revenue currently for Terumo BCT, but also is the most rapidly growing. And uh, it's at meetings at this we uh, continue to make connections, and we'll talk a bit about some of our uh, things that are happening within the space, uh, particularly for our, our primary platform, which is the quantum um, uh, expansion system. But we also have the Elutra, uh, which also has been around for about 30 years. It's finding some renewed interest now with uh, organizations, uh, particularly in the T cell therapy area. And so we're uh, working with a number of organizations on uh, how to extend and maybe modify those types of platforms. So one thing uh, I'd like to... I guess show a bit of excitement about is that earlier this year we announced a collaboration with Athersis and Regenesis on uh, the use of quantum as a manufacturing platform. So some of you may have seen this, but uh, Athersis has been using and Regenesis have been using uh, quantum for a number of years already uh, for the development of, uh, of their programs or for evaluation of the programs. And what um, they are now evaluating as whether it can be utilized uh, at a CMO's facility, an external facility, as a manufacturing platform broadly for their late stage uh, clinical trials and uh, potential also then for commercial utilization. So we're excited to uh, be well underway with that uh, evaluation and hope to have additional information uh, uh, about this uh, process and how that's going and even a model for others that have also often asked about the use of quantum as a manufacturing platform, uh, whether it's an autologous or a allo type of product as well. So we can um, accommodate both of those with, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, with the quantum. The other thing that uh, is exciting to us is that there have been a number of initiatives that some of you may be um, familiar with in Horizon 2020 in Europe. Uh, it's the largest uh, research and innovation program uh, with almost 80 billion euros dedicated uh, over the next seven years. And uh, we're excited to be involved with a number of academic and uh, some commercial organizations that are being awarded grants uh, to be using the quantum platform, again, um, as a, a possible manufacturing uh, platform for these initiatives. Uh, so um, it's a kind of a, a nice uh, opportunity there as well for growth. So where have we been growing in the last year? Um, Obviously, there have been a number of discussions here uh, today and yesterday on gene therapy and immunotherapy. And here are a number of examples that uh, uh, areas that we're currently working with and have had some initial success, uh, particularly with the lentiviral manufacturing at UC Davis. Uh, some of you may have been at a presentation that uh, Gerhard Bauer presented in Washington, D.C. a number of months ago on the success that they're having there. Uh, we're having good success with retroviral manufacturing and now also doing some work in AAV. Uh, on immunotherapy, we have a couple of organizations that are doing some DC work, and as well as uh, our capabilities internally that we're doing that. And uh, we also continue to have early success uh, with T cell expansion. So uh, we are looking beyond what we had initially designed uh, the quantum for, for adherent cells for um, adipose bone marrow or cord uh, BMCs, uh, fibronectin uh, and other areas, uh, I'm sorry, not fibronectin, um, uh, uh, other cell types or adherent cell types and uh, expanding into even some suspension types of cells as well. Uh, we've also had very uh, great success recently with NSC uh, work at the City of Hope. So um, really what we've now most recently done is that we are integrating um, Harvest Technologies. Harvest Technologies was part of uh, Terumo Corporation uh, for a number of years. 
as a global leader uh, for point-of-care platelet-rich plasma and bone marrow aspirate concentrate. So they've got a, uh, a centrifuge with a number of disposables that are used to concentrate that and then use it at point-of-care for autologous use. Uh, the, the process is about a 15-minute process, so very quick to move that forward. And it just made sense to bring um, their facility, their people, into Tururumo BCT. Uh, they uh, are currently located in Plymouth, Massachusetts. Uh, all of that's going to be relocated, uh, the manufacturing process and such, to the Lakewood, uh, Colorado facility. So we're in the process of, of doing that right now. And I'll show a bit also about why uh, we feel that it's an important uh, part of how we are going to have a continuing process of going from end to end with this. They have currently uh, over 7,000 uh, devices globally. Much of that, or most of it, is in the U.S., although they do have a number of them also in, uh, in Europe as well. And it's been uh, used in over a million uh, patient procedures to date. Uh, and currently they have over 250 uh, associates uh, in the sales side. Now, we do have a model where the PRP side is sold directly to uh, physician offices, and then the BMAC side is uh, primarily or only sold uh, through distributors globally. So it's the first system to offer one uh, button processing, and I mentioned uh, the PRP and BMAC. Just uh, this spring, uh, we also launched the adipose tissue, which uh, can now also be used for uh, concentration of cells. So it's a two-in-one process. You get a little liposuction and a little injection, possibly. Um, so it's all very exciting for a lot of patients that do that. But um, it, again, it's about a 15-minute procedure, and then the little uh, disposable is very specific with a shelf that floats in, um, as it spins and divides the various cells. So where is there an overlap and why would it make sense to do this? Um, so really the BCT uh, cell processing group uh, has been focused uh, in sales really in the research and preclinical area. We do have some IND files with a couple of organizations now and anticipate that moving through as well as I mentioned earlier with the hope that maybe we can get into mid or late stage uh, clinical trials as well with some other organizations that are evaluating. Um, and the harvest uh, technology, which again is point of care used in a do doctor's office in the OR setting for spine surgeries and such, has really been used in the clinical setting, um, but with relatively less uh, clinical data with that. Uh, so oftentimes it's being used essentially in an off-label setting. And where there isn't really a lot of overlap, we see that there could be opportunities to learn in terms of how patients might be treated later on with cell therapies at the point of care setting as well. When we look at the number of indications, of, and clearly on the quantum side, uh, that's just a, a small number of the opportunity for qu uh, the indications that could be used uh, and are currently being used and tried. Um, for the harvest technologies and SPAR prep and the various disposables uh, for PRP, BMAC, and ADIPREP, there are a number of areas where there is some overlap uh, for clinical use, but again, at the point of care for autologous use. So we feel that uh, we're really well positioned to kind of go from early uh, clinical research, preclinical, all the way through the clinical setting and point of care uh, with some overlap uh, occurring and using some of the synergies from our manufacturing capabilities as well. So what we have now is really uh, an end-to-end -end portfolio where we have uh, collections with their aspiration kit, the Spectra Optia, Apheresis, and Elutra. Uh, Elutra oftentimes used for monocyte enrichment. Uh, and then the quantum cell expansion, uh, where we've been very successful in expanding uh, in our holofibal bioreactors. And then really where the next question is, where do we go next in terms of cell wash concentrates for these smaller volumes and then keeping the system closed also for uh, fill finish? And so we are uh, in discussions and working internally on various platforms to continue that process from cell expansion through um, cell wash concentrate and fill finish right now. So that will be uh, the next opportunity as we grow uh, with our 40 plus years of experience. And then finally, it just really comes down to the patients, and uh, these are a couple of patients here uh, that were uh, leukemia patients that were treated on our products and uh, have successfully survived um, their cancer. So thank you very much.